Nightingale is a very special open world survival crafting game where you yourself create the realms you can then explore in single player or with friends. There are main and side quests to complete, you can unlock companions and fight huge bosses in third and first person. I could already play a lot thanks to an early code from Inflection Games and they are also kindly sponsoring the video so if this looks like a game for you then totally check it out via the special link in the video description which would really support the channel as well. Now Nightingale is made by ex Bioware Dev and that DNA definitely shines through in the game's world and quests. Your main quest is introduced to you by the mysterious Faye Puck, who is constantly hinting at bigger things going on, all while mocking you for how little you know. But for some reason, he has chosen to help you through the different Faye realms, which are basically multiple small open worlds, in your quest back to the city of Nightingale, the last still standing city of humanity after an apocalyptic event known as the Pale. So you already set out with a pretty strong sense of purpose, but then you also also meet other people who have quests for you which will take you to new and different realms. And exploring these realms is always a joy which is also thanks to the game's art direction. It mixes steampunk with magical machineries and mysterious nature based fairy magic. Which means that you can walk through a forest and find a giant metallic hand sticking out of the ground. Or find half a ship crashed on a hilltop. Not all of these actually hide an objective or reward but it made me excited to continue exploring as I was always looking forward to what strange things I would discover next. But the best part is, is that you get to pick what type of world you get to play in thanks to Nightingale's biggest unique feature, the realm card system. Instead of playing in one large open world, you effectively make a network of different maps by finding portals and activating them. Doing so requires realm cards which decide which type of biome you play in, so a forest or a desert for example, how dangerous that area is and which NPC factions you will encounter. On top of that, you can also find a realmic transmuter on a map that lets you play minor realm cards which can do things like increase the amount of loot you get from chest while lowering your damage resistance or increasing your damage while limiting your stamina. So this really allows you to fine tune exactly what you want your next adventure to look like and since each individual map is randomly generated you have an endless supply of places to explore. The developers have already stated that more realm cards including new biomes and enemies will be added over the course of the game's early access too so there's even more to look forward to. Now one thing you will soon discover when exploring the realms is that you're not out there alone. You'll also come across other adventurers who need some help, sometimes with building something, other times they need your help defending a generator of some kind. But while they don't offer you important missions like major NPCs you'll come across during the main quest, you do still want to help them out because you can recruit them as a companion after. While you can only have one at a time, having an extra party member really helps out. They can help with gathering and they can carry stuff for you, but more importantly Importantly, when you get downed in combat, they can revive you. They also have their own inventory of equipment, so you can deck them out with better gear to help them perform better in a fight. Because make no mistake, combat is a pretty important part of Nightingale. And by the way, if you liked the video so far, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more on the game. So you obviously find enemies and dangerous creatures roaming the open world, and there are locations with a reward that can only be unlocked after clearing the nearby area of enemies. Those are not the only type of objectives you'll find as there are also puzzle shrines where you have to activate crystals in the correct sequence to complete it and traversal challenges where you have to climb to get your rewards. There are even locations that combine multiple types of challenges like this tower I found that marked every other important location on my map after I completed it. So a fun way to unlock this very helpful and common reward we see in many other open world games as well. But the most important objectives are the major dungeons called sites of power because these unlock new types of realm cards for you to craft. They can be pretty challenging, especially the boss fights at the end, and you also need to meet the dungeon's power level before you're even able to enter. Because yes, your gear is also pretty important. Your tools, weapons, and clothing all have a power level, and the higher your levels, the more dungeons and realms you are able to enter. Your main way of getting stronger is by upgrading items for which you need a special resource called Essence. You get this from a lot of things, sometimes it drops from enemies, sometimes sometimes while gathering, but the best way to get essence is by completing the side objectives that I mentioned earlier. You really want to do as many of these as possible so that you can immediately upgrade most of your items once you unlock the required crafting station. And make no mistake, upgrading makes a huge difference as it doubles the power level of all your starting equipment. It also increases the rarity of an item from common to uncommon, which means you can apply infusions to it. These add modifiers to an item, like an increase to health or more item durability, 
although I imagine that rarer infusions come with more interesting and powerful buffs. And that's the main thing, I've mostly just scratched the surface of what I've played so far as upgrading items even further unlocks more infusion slots and you'll also be able to attach spells to tools or weapons so you can cast magic. Some spells can help with gathering, like the ability to regrow trees after cutting them down, and others are specifically for combat, like the ability to trigger AoE attacks or light your weapon on fire for some extra damage. Another thing you want to keep in mind is that you really should upgrade all your different weapons rather than picking a main one. And that's because certain types of damage work better against certain enemies. One of the first bosses I fought was resistant to the slashing damage from my axe, but after switching to a pickaxe I had a much better time against him. Similarly, this boss that kept spawning a minefield around himself is much easier when you have an upgraded crossbow so you can stay at range while taking him down. So as you can see, Nightingale has a ton in common with open world RPGs, but at its core it's very much a survival game. You'll need to collect resources using various tools, which you then use to build structures and crafting stations that help you make more things or refine resources like ore into ingots and wood into lumber. This all works pretty smoothly thanks to your ability to hold E to grab all nearby resources and the fact that your companion also helps gather and carry materials you need. I also like how instead of building a wall or a door, you place the blueprint and then add the materials in order to properly craft the structure. That means you can design an entire structure in one go and then start adding the resources needed to build the entire thing. And putting some effort into this is also really important as your home base or estate as the game calls it is where you'll spend a lot of your time to craft and prepare for the next adventure. You can always fast travel back to your base no matter where you are and you can even build your own realm portal in it so you can travel to different realms right from your front door. You do want to put special attention into where you place what though as crafting stations can get certain buffs or debuffs depending on where they stand. Obviously a device which needs fire is useless when it's standing out in the open while it rains, but even a regular workbench will increase its crafting speed if it's under a roof and in a well lit area. Luckily you have options to quickly pick up and replace crafting stations and other building elements so redesigning your estate is a breeze. If you want to expand even further you can unlock new blueprints for base building by doing the side objectives I mentioned earlier or you can look for special essence traders that can sell you blueprints for new gear and structures. Early on you're primarily unlocking new utility structures so you can craft more things but later on you can seek out unique styles to make an estate that matches your preferences. And again I feel like I've barely scratched the surface here as there are many realms I haven't been to, special world bosses and group content that you start from a location called the watch that only unlocks in the late game. And while I've been playing by myself, Nightingale also supports co-op for up to six players so you can also hop in with a group of friends if you'd like. So really the game has a ton of content right out of the gate with early access, with more worlds to explore, enemies to fight and gear to collect and craft coming in the future. Again, if it's piqued your interest, check out Nightingale via the link in the video description. Remember to leave a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe so you won't miss the next one and watch our previous video on another big open world game coming soon, Dragon's Dogma 2, by clicking on the screen. I will see you in the next one, goodbye.